Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and in this mini tutorial I'm going to show you how you can randomly generate objects in Unity 5 and also use gravity to create different effects. So first of all in this scene I've just got a quick little ground plane here as a cube and I'm just going to insert another cube and this is the one we're going to be randomly generating. So I'm just going to place it there for now and in my asset window down here I'm going to right click create and javascript and I'm just going to call this script uh, random gen and you can open it up in monodevelop and as you already know monodevelop is the tool which you can write um, code in for unity and when you uh, start up you um, sorry monodevelop you may have a few lines of code pre-written just delete anything you get. So we'll start by writing our script and we'll also put in a few lines that we're not going to use at the start but we will use later on in this little tutorial. So first of all we need to set a variable so far and we'll call it do object and then we'll call it a, yeah, so be a game object. Remember it is cap sensitive so you need a capital G and a capital O on there. And then we need start our function and then open curly bracket and then I'm going to put in a line of code here which we're not going to use just yet but we will later on so it's wait for seconds and set it to zero and semicolon at the end always remember your semicolons so next we need to set the uh, position variable so position be a vector 3 so we now uh, sorry we now need to set um, a range using random numbers so here we can use random dot range and we'll have minus 10 and zero so we currently set there the x position at a random range between minus 10 and zero but I'm going to set that to 10 so it now goes between minus 10 and 10 anywhere along that um, x axis so now we set y and I'm currently going to set that to zero for now and the z or z we want random range and we'll set this to let's see minus 10 and uh, we'll do zero for this one let's end the line there so now we've set a random range for the x and z or z um, places so now we need to instantiate so this basically creates our um, object in random places So we need to create the dupe object and at position we stated identity. Okay, so that finishes that line there. The next line down, we're going to put yield. Wait for seconds again, and I'm going to set it as zero once again. But we will play later on. And this final line that we're going to write, um, we're not going to use at all for the moment. So we need to put two slashes. And you'll notice everything we write now is kind of greyed out. That means that it's not an active line. Destroy game object. And then last line is close curly bracket. So let's save what we've written. Make sure that's saved. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so then back into Unity. All you need to do is drag this script onto your object as usual. So now I'm just going to kind of scale this down a touch uh, to make sure my person is on there. They, I think they are. 
Yeah, that's fine. And now let's press play. And it's not working. I forget. Yes. We've done one silly thing, or we've missed one silly thing. Because we set a variable, didn't we? Down here. So we need to drag this cube into there. So now in your script on your cube, the dupe object is cube one. So when we press play, it's still not working. How oh, very strange. You can see them being created. It's not quite working. Okay. So let's have a rigid body on this then. So our component physics, rigid body. And you'll see that gravity is ticked. So let's press play. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So we set it in a silly place. That's the reason it's not been working. So what I'm going to do is quickly remove the rigid body. And due to my stupidity, I haven't actually set the position of the cube correctly when I first set up this little scene. So now as I set everything back to zero, let's do everything with this, we should have a little bit more look. So now let's press play. And if we look over here, we can see they're being generated, all these cubes. So they will keep generating over one another, but they do it kind of very, very, very quickly. So now what we're going to do is let's play around with this a little more. So let's change this yield, wait for seconds, let's put this as one. And then let's save. And just to add a bit of colour, let's add this texture. So essentially, this is how my, the Minecraft random generation works just before you start up a level. It's not exactly perfect with this method, it's a little messy, but the same principle applies. As you can see, the blocks are randomly generating one every second as we did set it to seconds as one just here. You can put this as a decimal, so you have 0 0.2. So it will now generate one block um, every 0.2 of a second. So for every second in existence in the game, it generates five blocks. So let's quickly turn around. As you can see, it's generating them at a quicker rate. So what we'll do now is let's add some more blocks. So let's control D and duplicate this one. And let's drag that. And let's duplicate it again. And let's add this. So now we have three different blocks, which kind of look like Minecraft blocks. Let's go into our, C our uh, script, sorry. And let's modify this range of randomness to create a lot more. So let's change the x so it can appear from minus 50 to about 10. But let's also change this y axis. So let's copy this and paste it here. And let's change the range so as, uh, it can appear on the y axis from anywhere between minus, let's say, 10 and. Um, let's say just five. So it's got a space of 15 blocks. And let's also change this from minus 50 to 20. And let's save that. And now because we've duplicated this particular cube into three, three of the same script will run. So let's have this set back to zero to make it go super quick. Save again and press play. Oh, what have I done wrong there? Oops, I've copied back to three and I shouldn't. That is my fault. Let's resave. Um, press play. 
They are fixed, you silly thing. I've still left the um, bracket there. It's early morning, come on. <laughs> okay, so now we press play. And we should see the generation happening at an incredible rate with all three of them cubes. And it's happening over a larger area as we've defined it as we want it over a larger area. So, what else can we do with this? That can be used as a quick, simple Minecraft generation. But what else can you do? So let's stick with this cube, and I'm just going to leave it as the green texture for now. So let's set this a uh, random range. Let's change uh, the Y back to uh, a zero. And we'll leave that um, as that for now. So when we press play, we should hopefully get kind of a, a path slowly building up that we could take. So we could do a decreasing this now. So let's put this as minus 20 and also as minus 20 and resave. Head back to Unity and press play. So if you're creating a game where the path ahead of you slowly generates and you have to take your time to walk across, then this would be the sort of thing you could go for. If you could now slowly try and walk across without falling through. So another thing you could use this for, I'm going to change it now to um, brown block. And I'm going to change this to minus 10, minus 10. I'm going to change this to change to zero for now. So now we have this script. Change the y axis just here. I'm going to put this as, let's see, let's put it as 7 and save. And the next thing we want to do to this is what we did before with most objects is add, oops, add component, physics, and a rigid body. Make sure you have use gravity ticked just there. So when we press play, Notice they all start falling. So it could be used as sort of a crumbling effect. Gravity can be quite handy. You'll see that they're slowly kind of building up there. Yeah, I get like a bit of a mounting going there. Another great thing you could actually do if you wanted to is I'm going to go to Game Object, 3D Object, and Sphere. And I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.2. I'm going to add a rigid body to it. Keep gravity ticked. Let's get rid of this cube now. And let's put that random gen script on our sphere. And remember, drag the sphere down here. So I'm going to... Uh, change this to let's say 10 and let's put 10 for the X and let's save. So now we've got gravity creating a downward force for these tiny little spheres which kind of give maybe a hailstone or snow effect but you can see them there kind of building up on the ground. So that's one use for it. If we were to, let's say, increase the size, let's put it 111, and let's also take off gravity. Have a look up. They just start appearing over the sky, but they have physics attached to them now, so they kind of move around a bit, like marbles in a way, but they'll go all over the place, really. So it's kind of, at the moment it's kind of like generating bubbles, you could say. So if you want bubbles, maybe you could do it that way. And finally, we'll play around with these which we wrote before. So we've already played with this one in yield for seconds. 
So if we change that to one, it generates one every second. This one down here we've grayed out. Let's delete them two slashes so it's now black. Let's also put this to um, let's put it as five. So now what the script is doing is generating one every second, and then every five seconds it is destroying that game object. So when we press play, there will only be a limited number of these random objects in existence. So as you can see, they're slowly generating, but there will never be too many. As one disappears, more come along. There will only be a few in existence, as you can see. So the higher you have this number here, wait for seconds, the longer your randomly generated object is appearing before it gets destroyed. So let's press play. And you should hopefully see that we're now going to have more in our scene before they get destroyed. Yeah, you can see them appearing in the hierarchy. So you can use that in the same way for effects, really. So if we change that to zero, let's keep it as 10. Let's put our uh, gravity back on. And let's press play. In fact, before we do that, I should really save. So now let's press play and all the uh, spheres will come crumbling down to us pretty quick but then after 10 seconds they will start disappearing so we'll never have more than too many in the scene as you can see there are they are starting to disappear okay so we'll leave that tutorial there for now just this little script alone can create so many different things within a game um, especially when it comes towards item duplication uh, gravity is always a good thing to play with it, it, it's quite a lot of fun um, so realistically yeah this will come in handy if you're trying to create a minecraft sort of thing it's probably not the best kind of script to create a random world but it will create a crude uh, random world as you saw uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope this has been educational for you.